Welcome to another episode of Town Hall, a Black Queer Podcast with me, Bob the Drag Queen of Peppermint, the podcast where we journey through a theme by sharing stories, music, poetry, and art of varying depth and hilarity. In today's episode, we're discussing last night's um, election. Today, we have no guests. It's just me and my dear, dear friend, uh, Ms. Peppermint. Um, and we are now, um, it is the day after we are in the, the wake of, uh, Donald Trump's, uh, pres- uh, presidency he has won or his victory. Shall I say he's won the 45th, he's now the 45th and the 47th president of the United States of America, um, making him, uh, one of two presidents who have lost a job and then get rehired again, um, at a later date in time. And last night, Pep and I did a little bit of election coverage over on, um, YouTube and, um, and X and Instagram. And how you feeling today, Pep? I feel pretty good. I want to talk to the people for a second. Um, I, uh, yeah, I wasn't really um, surprised with yesterday's results. Um, you know, there's a lot to unpack for sure. But the, the thing that ultimately um, is super important right off the top of the bat is like, aside from how we may be feeling, I know that there's probably some people who you've pro- hopefully had an opportunity to cope by now and spend some time with yourselves by now. But one of the things that would have been important, at least in the few days after the election, although it's too late now, is for them to count every single vote. After 2020 and 2022 with Georgia, that the the georgia flip did not happen the same day or even the the next day you know when when state when when we got georgia it was like days and days days almost a week later i think even more and so unfortunately she did concede so i don't know like what ground that gives us but um i'm actually i'm disappointed to answer your question directly i'm i am disappointed uh, last night, I was, you know, not, I was kind of, I was hurt. I was disappointed. I was feeling all these things. I was frustrated. You know, it's a mixture of so many things. And it's not like it's because the person that I wanted to win didn't win. It's not because I wanted history to happen. Of course, I wanted all those things, but it really was, you know, ultimately, we don't have a barrier now to a lot of the things that they said they were going to do in 20 in project 2025 and in and yeah. you know all the 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 anti lgbt anti abortion anti you name it laws that are already on the books thing initiatives that have that they've stated and that we've seen them play out. Like, I know that there's some people who are like, there is no federal abortion ban, but there is a, co- a correlation between Donald Trump saying, I'm going to make sure that abortion is not legal and him choosing justices that we knew were anti-abortion. They had a history of being pro-life. And then them, even though they said in their confirmations that Roe v. Wade's the law of the land, and then the minute they get in there, they take it down. There's a there is a connection between the Supreme Court making that decision and people and the and the young ladies, the the women who have died, you know, because they weren't able to access an abortion or because something wasn't up with their reproductive care. You know, there's a connection between those two things, and so that's how we're seeing it play out. And I'm fearful that the same thing is going to happen with the LGBT, specifically the trans community, with regards to the anti-trans legislation that we are now taking to the Supreme Court. Yeah. And, you know, I think that getting the, the house, the Senate and the executive and the presidency is certainly a big hit to uh, left leaning people. And it's certainly a hit to Democrats. Um, But you know, what I will say is this, I would like to encourage, you know, I'm on TikTok all the time. I live there. That's what, that's my, my uh, second uh, uh, residence is at TikTok. (laughs) Um, Not even New York. I'll kill you. I know. This TikTok (laughs) has my heart. Um, And what I will say is this. um, A lot of people who are on the left are really figuring out who to point the finger at. 
I mean, it's getting wild. They're like, we're going to blame the white women. We're going to blame the Latino voters. We're going to blame the black men. We're going to blame the 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 independent voters. We're going to blame the the withholding your voters. Um, and I believe that it sows a level of of divisiveness and division that I think is this is all kind of designed to do, right? If everyone can start thinking it was you, it was you. It's, it's very you know, it's very uh, Stephen Sondheim, you know. But it isn't my fault. I was given those beans. You persuaded me to trade up my cow for beans. It's very that, you know. Um, in a little into the well, woods I mean, reference. Yeah, I mean that's because I mean, well, there's two reasons I think this did happen. There's more than two reasons. A, it was a quick election. That's fair. There wasn't as much time to build a coalition as there might have been if it had been the normal two-year um, period of campaigning that Joe Biden t- took a m- about a year and a half of that. Uh, so there's that with the timing was, you know, rushed, fine. But I do, I also think that there were so many, I think that this time in particular, the campaign, the campaigns usually splinter or like segment their, um, who they're talking to. So they'll go and do a meeting with the black mothers of the this. They'll go and do a meeting with the, the workers association. And so like they, they identify all these groups, but they don't really do a good job of being intersectional of their approach to that and bridging the gap. And so like, they just have a very sort of like regimented thing. It's the same, it's the same approach that we see time after time. The way that they campaign this time around does seem to be similar to every other time in the, in the past. One of the things I also think that they really did skirt around, unfortunately, like we have to name it, is the sort of anti-war vote, the pro-Palestinian vote, the Muslim vote. Uh, the, the the stronghold in Michigan, but then in other communities. I mean, even to look at like, oh, Muslims only live in Michigan and the only Muslims who care about this issue or the only people who care about, you know, the the issue of stopping the war and, you know, in making sure that Palestinians have a voice in this conversation are just the people in Michigan. That's not even necessarily true. Like there are people all, well, all over- there's, um, there, there, there's, there's Arab Americans all over the country. I mean, I, I live in New York City. Like, I can assure you, there are a lot of Arab Americans living in New York City. And I live in LA and right now. And there's people who are you. Arab Americans who were concerned about the issue as well. Yes. You know? Yes. Yeah. So I think that was I mean, a bit of a mistake. I don't know that that, I don't know that, that accounts for the for the uh, for the it's not uh, all of it. fifteen million votes. That, that's what I'm saying too. Like we can't the the the, the finger point of being like it's because they didn't vote. Like I, I assure you that the fifteen million votes less that Kamala Harris got than Joe Biden, who was the most voted for president in the history of America, he got eighty one million votes. He currently holds that record. Um, they weren't all um, anti-war votes. I, I I also feel like there's a I feel like there's another thing that people are forgetting about, which happens a lot. It's actually quite it is quite common, um, which is when one party wins, they get complacent and they're like, "Well, we we did the hard work." And then once you once the party loses, they are so actionized, they are so motivated, they are so ready to to do what they need to do to get what they want to get. So when you live through four years of a, of a Donald Trump presidency, you're like, never again. And then you end up with record-breaking votes, right? And then when you like, well, we got what we wanted. And then you're like, well, we're good now. I, I did my thing. I'm going to let the other folks do, do the rest. And then you, but this is why, mm-hmm. with the exception of like, you know, Reagan to Bush, um, it's in the, for the past like 40 years, it's been like Democrat, Republican, Democrat, Republican, Democrat, Republican, Democrat, Republican. Every once in a while, a president will get two terms like Bush and Obama did. It's still um, Democrat, but- Republican. No, no, yeah, I'm saying it is still. I'm saying it, with, yeah. with the exception of uh, Reagan, to, Reagan to Bush was Republican, mm-hmm. Republican. But then, it, then it was like Clinton, then Bush, then um, of course, you know, it Obama, alternates, then, it swings left yeah. and right. But I mean, yeah. e- even beyond pendulum. that, even even beyond that, like yes, you get complacent. That is a part of it. Sort so complacency is the thing. There's probably people that didn't vote because they thought, oh, it'll be fine. She'll probably win, you know. And sometimes when when the when the campaign um, at, you know, displays confidence. You know, I guess that's a, a sort of a, a, a thin line because you don't want to display too much confidence because then people might not come out and support. Um, but beyond that, I, I do think it's multi-layered. I mean, there are different groups that were. I think the the reason why the the I think the Palestinian group is important to 
to listen to, not so much that we want to point the finger at Palestinian folks or or people who are supportive of, of Palestinian voices. It's that there was such a strong contingent of elected officials who were Democrat and who were also, you know, like electors <laughs> um, who were Palestinian who were saying, we would like to have conversations with, we would like to meet with. And ever since the DNC, basically since she was nominated or, you know, since she was the the um, nominee and the candidate, she, they were, there was conversation about like, can can we get on the same page? And I was not involved in that conversation, but it doesn't appear as though those conversations that they were ever getting on the same page. And ultimately, it just means that the campaign and her as the candidate were didn't seem to send the message that she really heard what her voters had to say. That's the the oh. Arab American voters. That's white men who were who people who were like former um, ber- people who supported Bernie in 2016. And then, you know, Bernie got shafted by the Democratic Party. And there really wasn't um, any way to, there was not a come home, there was not a reckoning with that. And so we just kind of got Hillary Clinton and then we just kind of had to make do with whatever we had over the past eight years. And now there are people who like have expressed moving from Bernie to Trump, you know, and the, the, the Democratic Party has really needs to sit with where they sit with the left. The Democratic Party is liberal and centrist at best, not very leftist. And this time we saw a courtship of the right, basically saying we're going to move further to the right. And I think that messaging resonated in a certain way with the voters. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I am not. I'm certainly not a political strategist. I am just uh, some person with opinions and notions and thoughts. So obviously, take anything I say with it with a with an absolute grain of salt. You know what I mean? And I think that it, it got to a point too where commenting uh, for a politician, it, it kind of became like a tough on crime. There was a time where like. Democrats had to be like, we're we're going to be tough on crime too. No one's going to be tougher on crime than us because the Republicans were like, we're going to be tough After on crime. After the Republicans then, said it, exactly because everyone's like they yeah. love it. Then then they were like, well, then Bill Clinton was like, well, me me too. I'm I'm so tough. I'm I'm the, I'm the toughest. No one's going to be tougher on crime than me. I am I'm 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 the toughest. I'm queen tough, honey. You want to talk about tough? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna be tougher than tough. I'm gonna be tougher than Teflon. Right. I'm gonna be they're, tougher out, than they're out writing. They're out. They're out conservatizing each other. They're basically like, oh, you don't want abortion? Well, we yeah. don't want it either. Oh, no, you don't want the border? We don't. Okay, then. Uh, and, and they and they keep moving to the right. Most and I think that's because most voters in America are centrist. I think most voters in America. Why does my thing keep doing thumbs down? Most voters in America are centrist. Most of them are not far left or far right so if you do something that's too far left then the, all those voters who are like whoa she's saying she wants to do this then you'll lose them so it's this really weird balance that you have to play i agree with that you have to walk I mean, a tight rope. i agree with that but i actually kind of I, don't, I think that that wasn't necessarily true because they did not test that this time around she went very far right so according to that logic she should have won or she should we she should have had a lot more votes she wasn't, she, and she, there's no way that she was too far left because she was basically mirror, mirroring and mimicking everything. And she went so far into the right with, with her, with what she was planning and the stuff that she even changed talking points that she'd had in the beginning of her announcement that ha- of several of those things fell off. Stuff that Tim Walls was saying that fell mm-hmm. off. And there was a very good response to Tim Walls. I think if we had stayed in the direction of that energy that we had had when she announced Tim Walls, we knew that Tim Walls was further to the left than she was. And the response was wonderful. And the policies, f- free, you know, n- the child tax credit, that which they kept, the, the free meals and lunch for everybody, you know, like all of these things that he was bringing a sort of l- more left a uh, set of ideas to her campaign that she didn't have when she first announced because at first it felt like she was just a copycat, a, a copy, carbon copy of Biden. And when she announced Tim Walls, people were responding very well to that. And then even yeah. he stopped talking about a lot of those things. So I think well, that I was a mistake. Wanna, 
But also, if we're gonna, I mean, there are so many things at play here. I mean, we just released mm-hmm. an episode about massage noir, and I think we'd be really remiss to not just mention the fact that this is a a black woman, um, mm-hmm. you know, running against she a white did. man, a, 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 a black woman do. with with essentially every credential you could ask for. She's worked in all three branches of the government. Like she is as accoladed as a person can accolade, you know what I mean. So there is so much at play here. There is the there is uh there is the 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 genocide in in Gaza. There is the fact that she's a black woman. There's the fact that uh that uh that Democrats got complacent. There's the fact that she did not separate herself enough from Joe Biden's presidency. There's the fact that she only had like three or four months to campaign, while Donald Trump has essentially been campaigning for ten years y'all forgot donald trump came down the escalator 10 years ago we have been doing this for 10 years and this lady had a one season i think another thing that's at play here is donald trump even if donald trump even if we wipe donald trump's memory all of our memories like if we just started anew today and introduce him today donald trump seems to be very good at looking at a hundred different types of people, just looking out over the crowd and saying, you, I can see what your problem is. And he can under, he, he seems to be very good at identifying the pain or the complaint or like what, what that person, what their gripe is or what, or what, what, what is wrong, what that person feels is saying that they need. He does seem to be good at listening to that and then working it into his rhetoric, what he's saying. Do you know what I mean? Even if he doesn't know anything about yeah. it, if somebody's like, "We're upset about pizza today," he'll, he'll suddenly he'll have the pizza thing on his thing, and I and that shows that he's reacting to what people are saying, and he's he's seeing that because he cares. He doesn't care about. I don't believe that he cares about. I'm not. I haven't gotten the message that he cares about people, but whether he does or not, he definitely seems to be. Um, he cares about ratings. He cares. He reacts to what the the crowd reaction is. Like he's very aware of that. I didn't see that sort of um, nimbleness from the Harris campaign. Well, I did see her shift from from um, from rally to rally as people were coming to protest. And the first time she was like really hard about it. And then she was like, "No, let's hear them talk. Let's hear them out." But also, I think that she had less time to do that. Again, she had essentially one season to do it, and Donald Trump mm-hmm. had, had 10 years to do it. Um, so she had to shift super duper fast. I mean, you, you can I see mean, Donald he, Trump shift. He you can see Donald Trump did. shift from saying that he believes in gay marriage to so he doesn't believe in gay marriage, that so he's cool with gay marriage, to saying he believes he, he believes mm-hmm. he should, I mean, he have says abortion, anything. shouldn't have abortion. He'll say anything. He'll, but he, and, and he's had 10 years to shift on every on every position. You know, but in the same, but in less time than 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 Kamala was was in power or in power in in her position as a nominee or as the candidate. I think in the last two weeks, we saw Donald Tr- Trump add Muslim Americans to his. Th- they, they were not a part of his menu, even in ten years. We saw where they were on the menu ten within the last ten years. Yes, we did. In the last two weeks. He suddenly was like, I got imams. Where are the imam- imams at? Oh, we need imam. You want imams? Like, he was like bringing them in in the last two weeks. Like, last week. Mm-hmm. It wasn't even two weeks. It was like literally seven days ago. He's He first said, we're going to end the war. And then he was like, I want to talk to the Muslims. Because he saw that that was a weak spot for her. You know? Wasn't the Puerto Rican lady he had come out? She was like the head of some, some Puerto Rican group. Yolanda Vega! No, I don't know who. Oh, some, Do you know some, who Yolanda Vega is? Like, no, who's that? She's the lady that would call the numbers in New oh. York. Oh, I'm okay. Yolanda Vega for the new no, he, n- the numbers. <laughs> he has some Puerto Rican lady. She was like a like a she was like part of the Puerto Rican something association. You're like a Puerto Rican. A Rican. Yeah. Rican. So she came out and, and and like did some damage control after Madison Square Garden, um, and you know. And that's because it, it, he saw the online conversation and the blowback and he decided to what? Bring oh, we need what? We bring them in. Now I don't I really do believe that there were I, I hope not, but I don't I would I I I think his reaction we'd have to see a little bit more than just having her bringing her out for a speech to see his true reaction and how well he would really take care of people on the island of Puerto Rico. But it shows that he reacted. 
And I just wish that the well, campaign. He threw them some paper towels. He threw them some paper towels. Pa- they're, they're that would have been game. wild had he thrown paper towels at that woman. Y- I mean, Yolanda he, he Vega. Pa- 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 paper towels. Her. So, no, I know that say, he did. I'm yeah, saying no, I, in I, this I, time around. What I'm saying is, he, anyway, what I'm getting at is this. Uh, there's been a lot, but there was a lot going on. Of course, the pre- the presidency was not the only thing up for uh, up for on the ballot last night. Two black women have been elected to the U.S. Senate, um, doubling the number of black women ever elected to the Senate from two all the way up to four. Isn't that wild? Isn't that? I mean, it's <laughs> it shows where I we mean, are. <laughs> I mean, Kamala Harris is is one of them, and who's who's the other one? Who is uh? Let me Google. Well, the well, the two who were elected were uh, uh, Lisa Blunt in Delaware and um, Angela uh, also Brooks also Brooks in Maryland. I want to say I'm very proud of Delaware. Let's figure out who the um uh, that maybe uh, I I can't tell who who it was. Maybe um, Charlene can tell us. But in the meantime. Um, in addition to that, like Delaware did very well because we also uh, elected uh, Congresswoman, a future Congresswoman, Congresswoman elect um, Sarah McBride, who is the first openly trans member of Congress. Uh, and mm-hmm. she is representing Delaware's at large house district. And she, I'm from Delaware. I, I, I was born in Pennsylvania, but raised and went to school in Delaware and hadn't, um, hadn't, I had I so I'm older than Sarah McBride, so I did not know her when I was growing up. But I have met her, and um, you know, I, I I'm it, it's an historic moment for sure. How old is Sarah McBride? I don't know. But she's younger than me. Oh my! This is uh, they got thirty four. You could be a. I mean, I'm sure you can be. I know you can be a representative, a, a representative uh-huh. at, at four, but thirty four is so young. Good for her. Yeah, she's she young. Work. She got some, for her. some life left 34 in her. Thirty-four years old. She young, she's yeah. younger than me. She's a young and honey. She's spring chicken. Well, um, she got she got she got that gig, honey. She got that gig. Nice Good for her. And hopefully, it it um, I I I I I wonder what her experience will be. You know, I can't imagine her being in the halls of Congress with. I mean, listen. Marjorie Taylor Greene was across the hall from, I don't remember who it was, and she was going and knocking on the door, videotaping herself, taunting a um, one of the other uh, people in Congress it, when their offices were across from each other about her transgender child. Marjorie and so, Taylor Greene <laughs> holding public office will never not be an absolute conundrum to me. Marjorie Taylor Greene is... I will never understand how this uh this she look she her 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 personality her public persona is akin to that on of of a person competing on flavor of love like it's like it's like it's like pumpkin became a a, a representative like I did not know Ooh. how. I yeah. do not know how this woman people are like yeah I want I mean, that again I want that I want to double I'm going to double up on that the only reason, the only way, or, or the only, the only time that I ever saw her, and she was speaking in a way that actually seemed like a lawmaker, was when that I've noticed. I don't watch her all the time. Was when she was in that spat with Laura Loomer, and she was saying, Laura Loomer was saying some some racist stuff about Kamala Harris in the, in the white house. And she was like, whoa, yeah, she was like the white house. And she was like, whoa, like whoa, whoa, yada, this yada. is over. De- de- this, this is, we need decorum. This is disrespectful. And that's just because she was jockeying for position w- against mm. Laura Loomer. And she felt con- uh, competition. So suddenly she was, you know, coming off as a professional and, and, you know, and Laura Loomer got out. Laura Loomer, they, the, the Trump campaign gave her the boot, honey. Boot. They gave honey, Laura, we they haven't gave seen her. Mm, they gave mm, Loomer mm, the bloomers. Mm. They grabbed they grabbed Loomer by the bloomers, bloomers and threw bloomers. her over the rumor, honey. Lo- they were I over like the rumors of Loomer and her bloomers, honey. Fruit of the Loomers bloomers. Look right now. Those <laughs> boomers grabbed Laura Loomer by the bloomers and said, get her out of the rumor, honey. Oh, because it's giving me a what? Tumor. 
Okay. Exactly. <laughs> and we're we're done with the doomer. Okay, we're done. Um, but no, yeah, she they they got rid of her real quick. But uh, but another thing the Trump campaign did, they he will distance himself from someone real quick if people are like we don't like them. Like, like the way I'm he did saying. with Tony Hinchcliffe. When when they were like, We don't like Tony Hinchcliffe, he wouldn't like he was like, I don't know him, I never He's heard like, of I him. I never heard of him, I, I never there. knew him, I never met him, I never I saw him, I didn't I, know he was there. I wasn't I even there in the building when he was there. Yeah, I, I, in fact, if you guys want, I'll have him killed tonight. Like, I really don't like this guy. I don't know this guy. I ain't never heard of this guy. Please stop asking about this guy. But it's not, but it's, it's, it's always a lie because like, there's no way that you were going to get, like, not only did, the, not only, look, somebody suggested him, somebody, somebody, he didn't just walk in off the street. You know what I mean? And what they he knew did? he was there. He's a. He could have, but I mean, don't they vet him? Don't they make sure that don't they do a background check for people that are around the president? Don't they like you? You would even even the um, especially given that there was attempts on Trump's life, you would think that whoever they bring around him, they're going to check out. Like it's the Secret Service, and you know, like all this, you think so, honey? They checked him out. They figured out who he was and what he was going to say and what he wasn't going to say. They knew that, and but also beyond that, of, I did. I did a very short Google search. I mean, Twitter search on him. They already knew um, about the him. Night, the night he made all those, the night he made those jokes. Let me just read you a few of the jokes that he still has posted on Twitter to this day. He said, "On uh, he said September. He said nine eleven was the first time black employees were rewarded for being late to work." He said, "Attention, black athletes. We have no idea what those tattoos are. The ink is dark, and so is your skin." He said, "The Lakers are pouring grape drink." out for their dead homies darn autocorrect i meant rape drink and then this when he tried to lead he said anyone want to go half she's on a slave like how did they not see i found that in like three minutes how did they not find any of that anyone want to go half she's on a slave is crazy girl they are because they knew it i got taken by hostage that's not true I got taken, not so much against my will, but to, on a date with a guy who took me to, he's like, do you want to go see a comedy show? And I'm like, sure. And he took me to Kill Tony live, which is his podcast and his his show. And it was, first of all, they take, they, they did the classic, they did the thing that like, I guess edgy comics are supposed to do or like the ones who, you, who, who, you know, would get canceled for saying racist, homophobic, transphobic, all this stuff, stuff, misogynistic stuff in their jokes. And so he took, they took our phones. So we didn't have our phones. Well, to be fair, that, that's not just for edgy comics. A lot of no, comics it, do that. So you don't, there so you are don't a lot of comics. Who, yeah. But this was not well, him. This was, let me just real quick. They, they take your phone so that you don't post their con their content on the internet. So before they get a chance to, because a lot, a lot of, a lot of comedians do that to be clear. It's not just, it's not just edgy. Cause he posted all himself. Like he posts all of it himself on the internet. He's not ashamed of himself. He's quite proud of himself. Actually. Actually, he didn't post any of these jokes because the stuff that he said at that thing about the dead Palestinian children never made it to the internet because I looked and saw. So there's there's this stuff that he posts on the internet and it's edgy. The stuff that has he's on a slave, that's what he wants you to see. But the stuff about the dead Palestinian children and how it's good, he made sure that nobody was able to re- repeat that. So yes, I'll, I've never I'll, watched the show. I'll, I watched it. All, I've been to comedy shows as well, and you are a comedian. I know that that happens. But there's a difference between not burning your material and saying stuff, taking advantage to say stuff that you know is, whether it's in your set or not. You know, he he's that's not going to be on a Netflix special. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, about I, I the just want to be clear that you go to a comedy show to take <laughs> your phone. It's not because the, comedy's, the comedian is going to roast trans people. I just want to be clear to the audience that that's not the reason why they take your phones when you go to these things. I guess you have to figure out who the comedian is. If it's Tony Hinchcliffe, you can be rest assured that that's what's going to be happening. My point is, there's this was not a surprise. This was not like a change of tone for Tony Hinchcliffe. This was not him getting a new, a new attitude. Patty Labelle, like that. This is this this is his act. This is what he does. And so the fact that they didn't know that is a surprise to me. They knew. You know, they knew. They did. They I mean, been, been, been done. They've been, 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 been known it. They knew. They've been done. Been new. 
Um, let's tell you a little bit more about stuff. So we also have, uh, in 2024, the election saw a diverse slate of LGBTQ plus candidates achieving significant victories. Julie Johnson was elected as the first openly queer member of Congress. And Andy, and Kim, Andy was Kim was third, elected yeah. as New Jersey's first Korean American senator, contributing to the diversity and, and representation. That's DEI. Like how about that? <laughs> like, how about that? What do you What do you think about, I mean, it is really interesting. The thing that sort of will be remained, remains to be seen for me, and that I... I I know that there are some people that have said, oh, Trump, he's he's doesn't he's not serious. He doesn't mean any of that stuff he says. Oh, you're taking it too hard. It was da, 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 da. Not only in relation to like this election necessarily, but just like in general. I know that there are some people who have that um outlook. And that's fine. There is a chance that he'll just want to get in and give tax breaks to his to Elon Musk, and that's it. And maybe he won't be focused on that, but it is. I think this time around, even before, you know, the election, you know, there are billionaires who came out and were publicly saying, Trump, if you do this, I'll pay you this much money. And he accepted. Elon Musk was, Elon Musk was using his money to, um, to literally buy votes. He was giving out a million dollars every single day. Um, which, by the way, I don't know if you all know this or not, but Elon Musk is on track to be the world's first trillionaire by 2027. Um, take that for what it's worth. Just let that register within you. Um, and I'm sure he's definitely going to reach that now, um, which is kind of wild. I don't think I don't think that we as a people can actually fathom what a trillion dollars is. I don't think we can. I agree. And but I don't want to see it. I don't necessarily feel like I need to see it that close to the president, especially if they were basically said, I mean, it, see, it feels as though they bought these positions. So my point is, like, maybe Donald Trump can be bought and he, and they'll, and he will be distracted and, and too busy to follow through, like most politicians on his list of things and his sort of what he campaigned on. But it, it feels as though it's too late for that because a lot of the people who agreed with him and supported him and who are also in his party who never left office, even though he did, did stay obviously in office and implemented a lot of the things that he ran on in 20, the first time around and, and are just basically continuing that. Then we had project 2025. And so like, that is like sort of this manifesto and we, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know if they're going to like rebuke it, reject it and say like, I know he said, I never read it, but there, I heard it was some great things in there and not so great things. And like all these different things, he's try to characterize it. But every single, re- so many of these responses that he has are just his knee jerk reaction, characterizing it in a way that puts distance between himself so that he can say, I'm not responsible for it. You know, that's all he was doing. But Let's see if they really, I mean, they've already started some of the things that were in there, they've already implemented, right? And so that is, to me, is a sign that he will follow through on some of these things, especially if his base is as worked up about them as they as they have been. I thought that, like, they were going so hard on trans people at the beginning of, the, um, of his campaign or, like, you know, earlier in the year and all these things that I thought that once Kamala was announced that they would kind of focus on something else. And then they went and spent $60 million on ads that were only related to the trans community and attacking the trans community. And that showed me that they wanted to- You said Don Lemon did some um, reporting about that where uh, he discovered that what made it really wild was that the uh, they made, they were making some like like Kamala they 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 made some like Kamala Harris one of her big policies was giving trans people in prison gender like gender reassignment surgery when the truth is uh, those were actually Trump policies and I don't think people realize that you, you should go look at Don Lemon's TikTok um, who Talk was a, a journalist I'm certainly not a journalist but he had a really interesting thing he was like I don't know if people know this but that's actually that's actually uh, that was a Donald Trump policy that 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 allowed that to happen but then he but well, that's the other funny. thing. I wish that there could. I mean, uh, uh, okay, uh, it, Ooh, it, it, girl, you ready? <sighs> that the 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 messaging coming out of either Trump's mouth or his surrogates and the people around him's mouth that is connected to his platform about transgender surgeries for inmates, 
children going to school and having transgender surgeries. The uh, uh, illegal, quote, illegal immigrants or undocumented workers uh, coming here and taking all our jobs and taking all of our resources and money. Those things alone are things that were repeated over and over again, but are categorically misleading, if not completely untrue. And it seems like an easy thing that the Democrats and Kamala Harris could have responded about and said, this is absolutely not happening. And they could have just made that a part of the responses, like their sort of regular responses, because you do need to repeat it for people to hear it because they're repeating it. But it seems like, you know, there are a lot of people in his base who just believe it and they'll believe anything he says, but do actually do believe that they're giving, that this is what's happening and this is what's happening, you know, like all these things. And w- w- without being able to be shown the light on it. And unfortunately, this is going to sound sort of conspiracy theorist, but I do believe that the Democratic Party and the powers that be are might view the left as a threat. And they it's better for them to sort of capitulate to the right so that they can, I know you said most of the country is centrist, but like that allows them to continue business as usual. And if it's just the same thing over and over again, meanwhile, like we we have followed the rules for the past 15 years, the past like two, three presidents or more. Like it's it's certainly in in the 2000s. We have followed the rules. Democrats have followed the rules for sure. Not only have Democrats moved to the right, but the policies have moved out of the way and no longer served as sort of any um, opposing force to things like having like not only being blocked when Obama was in um, office from having, you know, from confirming uh, a two uh, Supreme Court justices, but now moving out of the way and allowing them to have possibly have two more. You know, like if they go, if things go the way that it looks like it's going to go, there's going to be seven conservative Supreme Court justices. I mean, I don't think it's going to happen to Sotomayor. I mean, she's she's the oldest of the liberal uh I mean, Katanji is, is, a, is a spring chicken, um, and Sotomayor is, I think, seventy years old. She does have a she does have a touch of the uh, diabetes, um, but I mean, I think she's gonna. Well, I, I think she'll last. It could be four longer. years at least. You know what I mean? Um, but but you know who's right, old? But, I mean, uh, that, Clarence that's at and least, uh, what's his, okay, what's so his great. nuts? We thought that with the next presidency, we'd maybe be able to balance the court out to have a five four or at least a you know something, and now we we won't even be able to like get. Like it, we just replaced Clarence Thomas with it with another conservative, so it'll still be the same amount. Like we'll still be at a disadvantage. A young one, exactly yeah. for the for the neck for the rest of the with, year with, with a fourteen rest year of their old lifetime, Supreme Court justice. You know, uh, it's just, it is frustrating. That frustrates me. The Supreme Court, I think, is a, a key issue that we have lost out on. That we saw we lost out on it back in in 2012, 2016. 2016, 2015, whenever it happened, um, that we're still seeing the repercussions of. And it seems to be self-perpetuating. I'm trying to find this clip. I don't know if Amelia can play it. If she can, it'd be really great. If not, I understand. But it's something that... Um, it's Whitney Houston. No, it's something that uh, that uh, Kamala Harris said during her um, concession speech where she was like, you know, when we fight, we win. But you guys must remember the fight is not over. On the campaign, I would often say, when we fight, we win. But here's the thing, here's the thing. Sometimes the fight takes a while. That doesn't mean we won't win. That doesn't mean we won't win. And honestly, that did give me some, that did give me some, some hope, to be honest. Like, the notion that it's all that. What do you think that means? I think she's saying it's not, like, guys, like, th- there's still work to do. No matter what, there's always work to do. You know what I mean? Like... Just because whether we win or we right. Oh, she's saying y'all keep the fight up. She's not saying that she's about to. I don't know that she's bowing out of politics. She'll probably keep. She'll probably go back to being a senator. Maybe who knows? You know what I mean? I think that she could. I think that she could certainly secure herself as a senator or maybe even a governor of uh, California if she really wanted to be. Um, 
if that ever spoke to her. I mean, you know, uh, 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 Tim Kaine went back to being a senator after he, well, he didn't, he was never the vice president, but after he was uh, Hillary Clinton's running mate. Um, I don't know, do vice presidents ever go back to just like. Well, Joe Biden did. Is that a thing? Not right away. Well, he went on to be the president. I mean, during uh, but that, that, that's that's the first like um, no, not right the away. first not right away. you know break that we saw. Like he was vice president and then took four year, four years you, off during Trump's thing, and he didn't go he didn't go back to being a senator. I guess is my point. Yeah, yeah. Al Gore didn't go do anything, and I feel like Al Dick Gore Cheney ran right after and... the Clinton presidency, though. Yeah. President. Ran for what? Yes, he yeah, but he, he, almost, he he won oh, the popular he vote, like yeah, literally the right. day he, after he they the left vote. office. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. You in general, no. no you're right. Go back they, to doing, I, like, I was some, thinking of else. president, vice presidents who eventually ran for president. Yeah. You know, and did they go back to being a senator after that? But no, they didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I do want to say one thing. I said it last night. You know, when, when we say that the fight's not over, it's 100% true. Uh, in just a few weeks, our community, the LGBTQ plus community, is going to have the opportunity, and, and, and the allies, is going to have the opportunity to rally behind trans people because there is a very important Supreme Court case that's moving very quickly. And, and we have a date at the Supreme Court that will be heard and argued in front of those mostly conservative justices on basically the right to bodily autonomy for trans people. But when they decide it, it actually will have implications for everybody, people who aren't trans, especially for re reproductive health care. And so this is going to be argued at the beginning of December. And in the meantime, basically for the rest of the month of November, it'll be really important for people to talk about the case, read about the case, share information, inform your friends and family about the case on social media, because the justices and basic all of the justices and the, and the Supreme Court, they do they do pay attention to what the public discourse is, what's being said. And it's a it's a historic case, not only because it's the first time that bodily autonomy for trans people is being argued uh, at the Supreme Court level, but then also the the respondents or the, the people that are bringing the case or being argued on behalf of are, are being represented are trans and the attorney is trans as well. And so this is the first time that we have a history making pretty much all trans case uh, before the Supreme Court. And these people, the, the Chase Strangey of the ACLU uh, is works very hard for the ACLU is an advocacy organization making sure that it's that we have free speech in our country when they cover different groups that are marginalized or minority groups, including the trans community. And so Chase works very, very hard and is probably one of the most brilliant minds when it comes to transgender law in our country that I've ever seen. Um, and he's busting his ass to make sure that we have, to try to make sure that we have a win or at least are well represented. And so please help him out, share about the cases, the Scrimetti case. Um, and so, yeah, I just wanted to to pose that to everybody and give you the opportunity to look that up during the rest of the month. And speaking of the ACLU, Bob and I uh, are going to be raising money for the ACLU this weekend on the 17th on my Twitch, on Bob's Facebook and Instagram, and on, on YouTube, all over. Bob and I will be doing a live video game stream. And we have not done a live video game stream in a minute, but we're going to be doing that. Um, and so we're going to be we're partnering with ACLU um, and we're, we're going to be raising money and it's going to be like a six hour stream. It's going to be wild. Do you hear me? Wild. So um, yeah, I'm excited for that. Make sure you tune in. You can just go to my page or Bob's page to check it out. Um, and I want to give a quick thank you to our production team who's just always on top of it, nails it every single time. Our executive producer, Tracy Marquez. Our executive producer, Charlene Westbrook. Our producer, Corey Nixon. Our post producer, Amelia Ritaler. Uh, and music, of course, by Lafemme Bear. Uh, we want to say thank you so much for tuning into this. And um, I think the best thing to do is just leave you with some words by Kamala Harris. The important thing is don't ever give up. Don't 
ever give up. Don't ever stop trying to make the world a better place. You have power. You have power. And don't you ever listen when anyone tells you something is impossible because it has never been done before. You have the capacity to do extraordinary good in the world. And so to everyone who is watching, do not despair. This is not a time to throw up our hands. This is a time to roll up our sleeves. This is a time to organize, to mobilize, and to stay engaged for the sake of freedom and justice and the future that we all know we can build together. Look, many of you know I started out as a prosecutor, and throughout my career, I saw people at some of the worst times in their lives, people who had suffered great harm and great pain, and yet found within themselves the strength and the courage and the resolve to take the stand to take a stand to fight for justice, to fight for themselves, to fight for others. So let their courage be our inspiration. Let their determination be our charge. And I'll close with this. There's an adage and historian once called a law of history true of every society across the ages. The adage is, only when it is dark enough can you see the stars. I know many people feel like we are entering a dark time, but for the benefit of us all, I hope that is not the case. But here's the thing, America, if it is, let us fill the sky with the light of a brilliant, brilliant billion of stars. The light, the light of optimism, of faith, of truth, and service. work guide us, even in the face of setbacks, toward the extraordinary promise of the United States of America. I thank you all. May God bless you, and may God bless the United States of America.